us, we have suffered. If you don't know who I am, my name is Dr. Hila Rokello. I am trying. We are trying. <laughs> when I say we are trying, we are really trying. First of all, I am ugly. It is a confession. I have accepted who I am. It is good to accept who you are. Even Eddie Kenzo told us, life we a lemon, you make a lemonade. So I have learned to use my ugliness to make money. I remember last year, 2020 was hard, but we had directors from Nollywood. You know Nollywood? The Nigerian uh, movie industry. Hey, they came to Northern Uganda. They were doing, making a movie. And you know Nigerian movies, there's always God and the devil. It is a two-sided thing. So they had Ramzi Noah. You know Ramzi Noah, that handsome guy in, in the Nigerian movies? Hey, the way you know <laughs> As if she met him, person, yeah, I know him. <laughs> Ramzi Noah was acting as Jesus. So they needed someone to act as, as the devil. Okelo, okay, when I saw the advert, I looked in the mirror. I said, Okelo, okay, you have talent. <laughs> really, if God has given you this talent, why not use it? I went for the auditions. The auditions were in Gulu, Boma Hotel, Gulu. We went there, 12 p.m. Do you know I thought I was one of the ugliest people in Uganda until I saw the line? There are people who are ugly. 12 p.m., the sun is shining, very hot. There's a man who was so ugly, he never had a shadow. Do you know how ugly you should be to not have a shadow? Like on the day God created you, he gave you a shadow, and the shadow said, I cannot be part of this conspiracy. <laughs> it left you alone. I cannot follow you like this. The line had people, I said, then they will let us see if we shall go through. So we go into the auditions. You know, you know, even ugly auditions are like music auditions. You step on stage, they're like judges, three people watching you, and then you do your thing, you know. The line was long. The first person went on stage, you know. The judges looked at him. They told him, ah, Madam, you go turn around. Turn around. We could see you very well. Mm. She turned around. They gave her marks. She went out. The second person went. They were like, yeah, yeah. We actually like uh, the way you smile. I think it will fit the character. She left. I was the third person. If there's anything about number three, number three is one of the luckiest numbers in the Bible, you know. Jesus, Jesus rose after how many days? After three days, you know. How many loaves of bread? Okay, I don't remember, but you understand the point. <laughs> so, I was the third person. I stepped on stage very confident. I said, can I start? I saw people fidgeting. The judge is fidgeting with their papers and everything. I said, madam, should I? I said, no, oh, my, my brother, first wait, first wait. Let us first sort out. I said, but I am tired. I Lunch time, I was already fast. They said, sir, just relax. They were fidgeting everywhere. I could hear them whispering, holding their mic, switching it off. I said, members. Until when one judge stood up and said, so, uh, your mister, uh, Okello, Okello Hilary, said, Mr. Okello, it's very, first come, join us. <laughs> they created an extra seat for me. They said, you come. Please, judge extend. They made me sit next to the main judge. I said, are we okay? They said, no, just relax. You let us watch. <laughs> I sat there. They said, just keep quiet. They said, hey, we can continue. They brought the fourth person. Now, from the fourth person up to like number 2,000 and something, a person would walk in. They look at them. They look at me. They give marks. I say, are we okay? They say, just relax. They look at me. They look at them. They're like, first, turn around. Okay, you also turn around. Turn around. <laughs> they give marks. Uh, until when the whole thing ended, I asked, so guys, why didn't I participate? They said, ah, when you arrived, we realized we never had a marking guide. So, <laughs> <laughs> life is hard. But when life gives you lemon, you make a lemonade. Mm, I've suffered, uh, and I, I like to use my suffering to teach people. First of all, I've learned one thing. Never change the church that you pray in anyhow. Some people change churches because of financial problems. I am from, I normally pray in a Catholic church. Eh? The mass is very fixed. It's one hour, it's one hour. Until when our neighbor told us, okay, Lord, do you know that there's a new church here? They give money. I said, you, you repeat that last part. He said, they give money. There's a church here. One, one, go, kid, the one, see here, come watch. He said, they give money. They give money. <laughs> I said, on Sunday. He said, on Sunday, 10 a.m. I said, okay. He said, do they just give? They said, no. You, when you have a very good testimony, 
they support you. I said, yeah, okay, I have a testimony. I have it. And I had a serious testimony, by the way. In my P7 primary living examination, when I was on the line about to enter inside, I checked myself. I realized I never had a pen to answer the exams. So I told the teacher, I said, Madam, I think I should first. He said, no, no, it's time for exams. It's UNEP. You do not joke with UNEP. Please enter. I said, Madam, I don't have it. Just please enter. <laughs> I entered. As I was entering, I said, Jesus, you lead the way. You're the one now. I don't know what I'll use. When I entered inside, the Holy Spirit told me, okay, I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit, but you know the things whisper to you. <laughs> I had something in my ear. Check under the desk. With the faith in me, I checked under the desk. There was a mathematical set. It had four pens inside. Moreover, four colors, red, green, red. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I could answer and mark myself. <laughs> I said, Jesus, you're the one. You're the one. I answered the exam, I passed highly. Don't ask me what highly means, highly is highly. <laughs> no, people never tell you the highly. You got four out of four, no, highly is highly. <laughs> I passed highly, and uh, here I am. So I said, that is the testimony I'm taking to church. I went to the other church, it was a born again church. I'd never attended born again churches. I went there, you know there's energy, born again. <laughs> There's energy from the entrance. Even the Ascari, who is welcome, he's already dancing. Hallelujah, hell, hallelujah. Then he has to use a temperature gun to check you. You enter inside. Entered for the church. It was fun. Time for testimonies. The person announced, the pastor. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I think it's about that time where we share what the Lord has done for you. If you have something that is within, within, within you, you better come up here and share. Because the Bible says when you share your story, it might inspire somebody else. And that person might be blessed. Somebody say, hallelujah. Do we have Muslims here? What? <laughs> Members, answer the question. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, sinners never answer, by the way. I was excited. They said, all right, so we shall have a minimum of five people. Please come up. We were not even five. We have only four people. Three ladies, one guy, me. I don't know why women always have testimonies. Men, God forgot about us. Three ladies, all of them. I have a testimony, pastor. They all lined up, very excited. The first lady went on stage. I was sure about my testimony until I heard the first testimony. Has somebody ever given a testimony that is so good you start doubting whether yours is a testimony. <laughs> it had all the qualities of a testimony. Death, you know, murder, accidents. It had all the qualities of a good testimony. This lady came on stage like, Pastor, for me, my name is Aisha. You know, I actually just joined the Born Again Church recently. But um, my new name is actually Jacqueline. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh my God, I'm so excited. What Jesus has done for me is amazing. And ladies have weird testimonies. You, you might think it's a very serious thing. Oh my God, I was like, like last time, you know, I was crossing Kampala Road. And then I saw this car. It was coming so fast. It was coming so fast. And you see, I, I'm, I'm like short-sighted. So sometimes I don't have my glasses. I didn't see it so well. But it almost knocked me down. Oh my God, thank, I thank Jesus. I thank Jesus. Amen. <laughs> she went off stage. <laughs> That's when I realized, actually, they give money. As she was walking, a certain rich guy followed her. Madam, madam, please. Here, uh, you have this. May it help you during your emotional uh, trauma. <laughs> I said, okay, no emotional trauma. <laughs> <laughs> the second lady came on stage. Now, this lady had, not even, I don't know, it's not even a testimony. We should call it a testament. <laughs> like the first, she had the third testament. Notice the first testament, she had the third testament. This lady gave a testimony that was so good that the people who gave the first lady, they collected what they gave her and brought it to this one. She was about to leave the church. She said, Madam, this one at the house is serious. You find, for you, you're okay. <laughs> okay, that was the third. I went on stage. I said, I'm a Christian. I'm a honest person. Why should I lie? My testimony was simple. I was on the line. I didn't have a pen. I entered the exam. Something whispered in my ear. I got four pens. Hallelujah. There was no hallelujah. People were silent. Nobody was crying. I said, in Java, I don't die in my movie. When there was too much silence, I said, so, the pastor even interrupted. I was like, so, okay, have you finished? I said, no, no, the, the real one is now the one I'm starting. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Uganda. On the day that I was born, my mother 
My mother died of prolonged labor. Immediately, I had somebody in the corner. Oh, sorry. In my mind, I was like, uh huh. <laughs> I have you people. I killed my mother. My mother, that's how she went. Two years later, my father we were, we were going, we were crossing the road there in the Massacre Road. If there's any road that people trust for accidents, it is Massacre Road. I didn't even finish. I said, we are crossing the road, Massacre Road. Somebody shouted, Nang it, Tata, Nang it, Fuck, Massacre Road. Massacre Road has killed people. <laughs> I killed my what? My father. I killed people. I think I killed the whole family. I killed my uncle. I remember my uncle died in Somalia. He was a soldier. Uh, my grandfather, he had retired. He was a retired army man, but he died of diabetes. Uh, our neighbor, who was a family friend, died of, of, of cancer of the heart. I remember uh, there's a Facebook follower of mine. He also died of pancreatic cancer. There's a person who died of, I think, a head injury. I killed everyone. I almost killed the pastor. I killed everyone. And at that point, you see the difference between telling the truth and telling lies. When you're telling the truth and you're being interrogated by the police, you can tell the same story four times without changing one word. When you're telling lies, things are never the same again. So the pastor came on stage, he was excited, he said, okay, Lord. By the people had given me things, people had brought goats, chicken, everything. They're like, this is for your father. Sorry, you have suffered. Eh? Hey, Amina, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Mothers brought their daughters. Please take my daughter. Just <laughs> I was writing names. It was a long list. You know, there was a... I was so excited. They had given me money. I collected over one million. Everything was going fine. Until when the pastor said, ah, Hilary, you have suffered. I said, real, real said, yeah, but I think this will help, you know. I was like, this is even too much, but if God gives you, you don't refuse. He said, yes, yeah. so I think uh, I just want to say one thing uh, to the people here before you leave. Uh, so did, did, you, uh, did you come alone? Eh? It, no, to, to church. Did you come alone to church? No, my father is there, my uncle is there, my grandfather. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you so much. My name is Joe Taylor. <laughs>